I wanted to check this one out because I'm like, how the hell can so many people like the Moon King? There is no way, but some, uh, somehow this happened. Why do Moon Kings suck by intentionally good? So many people swear by me that the Moon King is a fun class to play and against everything they ever tell me, I always disagreed. And we see here a Moon King main of all people telling us that Moon Kings suck. The Moon King. The perfect biological organism to have ever existed. So feathery. So fluffy. But once you actually turn into one, everyone automatically thinks that you're retarded. <laughs> why is that? Well, in today's video, I want to go over the reasons why one would think Mookins are bad in Classic, and maybe find out why anyone would want to play Mookin in the first place. So, let's just hop into it. Now, the number one issue I see spelled everywhere is that Mookins should be in fact called Oomkins, or <laughs> Joshi, Joshi called that. My boy Joshi in chat called this one was gonna be said. You know, nailed it. Now, playing a Moonkin for so long, I can attest that mana is an issue, but only because of our toolkit. I mean, we get Innervate and a 15% mana region from Talents, which is pretty- Okay, 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 okay. This is how you can tell that a druid player is bad. I played a druid, a druid in classic. I know, screw me, what an idiot. I played a druid in classic. If the druid ever innervates himself, that druid is terrible. You never waste an innervate in a worthless class. Innervate is one of the best spells in the game. You do that to the priest every time, okay? Or if you don't have to heal a lot, maybe a mage or something, but... Never innervate yourself. You are a cheater if you innervate yourself, okay? I innervated myself out of spite. Okay, Josie, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I'm gonna tell you a story. In Classic, when I was trying to cheese meters because I invented... I don't know, I didn't invent it, but uh, I, I came up with this. Probably somebody else did it before. I did the math and I figured out that spamming rejuvenation in an AOE fight is the most uh, fastest... is the best way to top the meters. So what I would do is I would even innervate myself, but I made a macro that said innervating and I put the name of some priest in it. But I was innervating myself when I said that. So every, the, the raid leader thought that I was innervating somebody else and I was innervating myself the whole time. <laughs> oh, is that Josh's girlfriend? How you doing, Teresa? You, your boy is made out of gold, okay? Do not let Josh boy. Do not let my boy Josh go. He's made out of gold. He's not a people person, but he's a good boy, okay? Okay. Yeah, you gotta do trickery if you wanna perform as a druid, okay? You know, this is this is not this is not 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 for kids, you know, this is like hard shit. Pretty cool, but warlocks get fucking life tap. It may just get made shit like evocation, mana gems, and even clear casting because they're apparent gods. They are. So to get around this issue, we Moonkins have to farm for hours upon hours to get as many demonic runes as possible, as well as mana pots. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's a demonic ruin? Well, it's just life tap for poor people. But even with that, we are still some thirsty mother- If you are a warlock and you are tryharding, you also have to farm demonic runes because they save you a GCD. So yeah, like, not even warlocks are safe. Fuckers. And you can see us chugging down big gulps like our life depended on it, because it kind of does. Big gulps, eh? And that brings us to our next problem. Even if we had full mana and were able to spam our abilities to whatever content we wanted, our birdie eyes solidly like to go cross-eyed, and we actually miss our targets quite a bit. And that's because we don't get any hit from our talents. <laughs> which gives us the pleasure of hunting down 16% hit yeah. from our gear alone, to make sure that we can actually compete with the other guys. Look at this gear. Like, druids have to resort to getting offset clot gear for their DPS. This is another reason that people don't, don't understand this. One of the main reasons that meme specs do not work, it is that meme specs do not have gear that, that enables them. Like, uh, for example, Bell Druids would be a lot better if there were uh, like a single dedicated set for Bell Druids, but there simply isn't. Big Gulp, that's a fellow American. I don't know what Big Gulp is. It doesn't sound very cool though. It doesn't sound like very, very healthy at all. I can hear you now. Oh, I'm a warlock and I don't get any hit either. Well, shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> you guys get hit from your actual tier pieces. Mookins don't get anything from ours oh, because yeah, they're made said. for hippies. No offense to my thought. 
Either way, this means that we can't stack more spell damage slash crit like the other guys because we have to focus on hit so much, therefore making us weaker. On top of that, our main damage- Because the gear also goes to the- Imagine you're a major a lock and the gear goes to the boom king, yeah. You know, you know what happened? You know, Esfand resorted to making his own guild to steal all the gear for his red paladin because he knew that if he was not the guild master, he would never get any gear, you know? You gotta have the grind set in your heart if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna succeed as a meme spec, okay? Damage ability Starfire is a three second cast time, and that's with getting the damn talents. And what about our AoE? Oh you mean hurricane with a minute cooldown? Yes, it's a thing. So why would Blizzard make these decisions that are so obviously bad? Well, for one thing they did make Druids a Jack of All Trade class. Good at all but master of none meaning they can be powerful, just very averagely, and this goes for all specs as well. On top of that, Mookins were designed by a baboon, and although a very smart one... Oh my god! Is that lead, lead game designer Ion Hasikostas? He, he got him in the video! Wow, that's very cool Blizzard, like it's good to see you interacting with the community in a deep way! Oh my god! He didn't know exactly what Mookins were going to be, and this is why we get melee focused talents in our tree. And some think the Mookie was supposed to be a tank of sorts, and many things do support this theory. Either way, it added to the whole mess of the spec overall. Now, Did you know, at first, at, like original vanilla, the first few patches, Moonkin form was the top talent of not the balance tree, but the feral tree. That's right, if you wanted to play a Moonkin, <laughs> you had to go full feral. What? Now all the issues I have listed do have workarounds though. The mana one can be worked on with Demonic Ruin slash Mana Potion. Is that guy keyboard and frankly, turning? I only have trouble during the Raggy fight and the Nefarian one. As far as hit, we could totally hit our 16% hit cap without tier. Here's another thing that is different from classic than from actual vanilla, and people don't understand this. And I have seen people that actually were like hardcore ra raiders back then, like Preach Gaming, for example. He said that, I don't remember that, but he said like, this is a cheese, you know, the fight is too short, of course this is not a real loss. That's not true, okay? People are better at the game now, so fights overall are much, much shorter because people do a lot more damage. And if you are around people that are doing a lot of damage, even though you don't do a lot more, uh, you, even though you're not a good player, you're, you're gonna perform better because every fight is shorter and you have more cooldown uptime and more mana. And this is what happened in Classic that made Druids like Boonkins a little better. It is that the fights are, were very, very short in Classic. The HP values were very low. And of course, in Season Mastery, they buffed the HP and Boonkins became worthless again, basically your sets as well, but the average player doesn't see all that gets worked on to make the spec somewhat viable. And this is another issue, player perception. It's pretty justified as well. I have found that the WoW community is very mid-maxy, and if you aren't playing or doing whatever you are doing to the max, well, then you're a shitter, and people will be more than happy to point out what you're doing is wrong, and that you shouldn't even be in a lot of groups at all. Which. Why would you be? I mean, as a Mookin, you're asking 39 other people to adjust for you to be there. And everyone wants the fastest clear times now. You're just going to be a hindrance to getting that done. Yeah, no dog. Gotta achieve the maximum everything even though I'm nowhere near the game level of apes. But I watch Twitch a lot and follow the Reddit, so I'm pretty fucking hardcore. I'm just kidding. Not everyone is like- You know that, you know that, like, uh, he memed on it, but it's true, it's true. A lot of people, and ironically on Reddit, on the forums, are like, Oh my god, Reddits are so easy in vanilla, oh my god, this is an embarrassment. Like, how am I gonna enjoy the game if they made the raids easy? And you look them up in the- Because, right, you can right-click them in the forums and check out their profiles. And they are all, like, level 29. They, they didn't raid, but just because apes did it in like a week, everybody's like, oh no, no, the game is too easy. The game is too easy. No, no, I cannot enjoy raiding anymore. Like apes did it, you know, the shit. Like this, and you can totally fight guilds and even pugs that are willing to take you as a moonkin. 
but you do have to be prepared to get shit talked if you do play one. I mean, to be fair, you are suboptimal. And mixing that with a community that highly focuses on optimizing everything, well, it isn't a good mix. He's and ruining my you can't blame the community either. World of Warcraft broken down as a numbers game, and it's not surprising that we nerds like numbers. So why would you even want to play a Moonkin? And after talking to many druids and Moonkins alike, I've come to the conclusion that you play because you have fun with it. And some people that like the support style a bit more. Some, like myself, like to push the balance druid to do more damage. Others like how it looks. Some druids like being a druid, but don't really enjoy the other specs, so they roll Moonkin. He didn't say something that you should understand, guys. Playing a Moonkin is not only all that, but it is also beyond mother freaking boring. It is one of the most boring specs you could ever play. You have a long but three second cast. And that's it. You just start fire for three seconds, you go AFK for three seconds, you're back, and you do, guess what? Start fire again. And it is a very immobile class because of that. So in fights like Ragnaros, you suck even more than usual because you get a move. It is awful. It is not even fun. Why would somebody do this? Like, if you want to play a Red Paladin, you still are a dumb-dumb, are, are but at least, man, I, at least I can understand that. This is like... Why would you do that to yourself? Just play a mage, you loser! Goddamn! Etc, etc. I personally love playing the Mookin for the community aspect. There really isn't too much of us, and you can quickly learn the Mookins on your server. And you can find little pockets on the internet with people openly discussing Mookins and how to really improve their gameplay. On top of that, the Drew community is a pretty tight-knit one. At least on my server. So oh, I'm that's, just gonna that's do a quick really shout cool out to the groups on Fairbanks, Horde, and Ally. You all are some cool people. Globe soft. The point is... Is that screenshot from Fairbanks US? Let me see if I can recognize the name. I'm trying to look at the names. Globe soft was a guild in Fairbanks US. But give me a second, I gotta zoom in. I gotta see this by myself. I do not see a single name I can recognize in here. What a shame. I think this is from my server in Classic. It's John Turturro again. Is that me? I don't know that. You all are some cool people. The point is, playing a Mookin, even with all of its downsides, can be fun. Some people enjoy the challenge and really try to figure out how to make the spec work even better than what we already know. And even with everything I have listed as issues, for the most part, we have figured out ways around them. And although the meters do tell a story for us Moonkins, I still encourage everyone to at least give them a chance. Sure, we won't be topping meters, but I say if a Moonkin can stay somewhere near the mid and still bring the utility, be it a Brez, a Tauntica, a mob off a healer, off healing and decursing, then that sounds pretty good. A taunt to get a mob off a healer is utility. You are a druid wearing nothing but leather and cloth because they have to wear a lot of cloth gear. You taunt a mob off a healer, you die. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's why you got 27 uh, freaking, 27 freaking war warriors to do a taunt of a mob, like what the hell, what the hell, I mean the battle rest is very cool though, it is useful, I'm not gonna take that down. Good to me, and if you are actually looking into playing a Moonkin, well I'm gonna bring up one other issue, there really isn't too much information going around for us Moonkins, especially here on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna give you a very deep guide on how to play a Moonkin. Okay, first you press Starfire. And then, the step two is to repeat step one. Thanks for coming. Holy I try my best to personally make content, but honestly it takes several different people with different ideas, such opinions, to really make something great. A dead Moonkin is better than a dead healer. I'm not the best True. I never claimed to be. I'm simply trying to push for Moonkins because I enjoy the spec a lot, and I think many people would as well. And although these guys certainly do not need my shout out, I'm simply going to list some Moonkin content creators. Hamster via probably just a video, he is like or a, a Moonkin fanboy. Help jumpstart someone's journey to playing a Moonkin or switching to one. First up, we got Hamster Wheel. I would say that he was actually one of the first people to really push Moonkin content, and his videos still ring true today. His gearing up guides really brought wider He's a very big uh, and not only that, fanboy. his content overall is great, you. and I highly recommend him. 
Next up, we got Classic TJ with his Balanced Druid Deep Dive with Skinwalker. It's a great video and I highly recommend watching it because Skinwalker is one of the best druids in the world and you can definitely learn a lot from this video. Next, we have Lackluster Gaming. Now, he doesn't do videos and he mainly streams, but simply watching him play Moonkin and asking him questions will for sure help improve your overall Moonkin game. Now, last but certainly not least is Wowie. Or Wooey. Wooey. I I'm not sure how to 100% Wooey. say it, and he hasn't corrected me on Wooey. either of them, so I'm gonna go with Wowie. He streams raids and puts out guides, with some even going more meta than just playing balance. He even dips into PvP a little bit. His channel will for sure help you out. Bunkins and all are decent at PvP, actually. He didn't say that. During a stream, so I highly recommend him as well. For the PvP side of things, oh, yeah. we have Joe no. Question Mark, an awesome channel with guides on killing specific classes one v one, and overall showing how good balance can be for PvP. Look at that damage though. Evan Flow also has a few videos out for balance better. PvP, and although not really guides, you can still learn a lot. From Guys, do you remember Evan Flow? This guy was leveling with tips out, I believe. You, you remember that guy? You remember that guy? Apparently he leveled so hard that he didn't sleep for like three days and he went to the hospital. Respect, man. Swag. You know, you know, you know like... Goddamn. Respect. I'm just watching the videos. I also highly recommend the Soda Pop and Deep Dive with tips out. It's by far one of the most educational when it comes to PvPing as a druid, and although not really Mookin focused, I just had to include it. Gamer, yeah, and true of course, gamer. This isn't all of the creators when it comes to classic Mookins. And if you have some guides slash videos you want to share, please feel free to comment them down below. But to end the video, yes, Mookins are not number one, but we certainly can be mid tier and bring a lot of utility to a raid, enough to where a good Mookin can help turn a raid around if things are going bad. And not only that, we are a small community that is always trying to learn and grow, which I think is personally pretty cool. Anyhow, hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Activate. Okay, this was very cute. It's always nice to have the perspective of somebody else. Uh, I don't think this guy is delusional, like he was very realistic what we was talking about what he was talking about the class. And if by any reason you need to stumble upon a monkey. Uh, this I so hope this was pretty illustrative from me. Like this is pretty much my my entire take on it too. And this guy is intentionally good. I'm gonna link that right away in chat. Right here. I could do that, but I need meth. <laughs> yeah, it's the only way. Okay, subscribe to this boy. Okay, he deserves some love. Like he makes a lot of cool videos, I love his gold farming content actually, I think that's very engaging, that's how I find found him actually. And if you are in watching this on YouTube as a video, check it down in the comments, we got a pinned comment, uh, to go subscribe to him, and you know, give him some love, give him some, give him some hugs and kisses, okay? Okay. Wow, that was a lot, I'm hungry.